people. It's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. Okay. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, you guys can save the date. It'll be a, I won't say, maybe it won't be an exciting fight because stylistically, you know, I don't think it, 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 it will make for uh, the most interesting fight in the world, but it's interesting because of uh, the storylines going into it. May 21st. You know, two two former IBF champions make the return to the boxing ring as uh, Mickey Bay, former IBF lightweight champion, takes on Tevin Farmer, former junior lightweight champion. Uh, so why is this interesting? Let, let me give you guys my little perspective on this. So, you know, we'll start with uh, Tevin Farmer. You know, Tevin Farmer, the last time we saw him, uh, he wound up losing his world title to Jojo Diaz. Um, he's had a slew of promotional issues since that loss, hasn't gotten in the ring. Um, you know, he was rumored to get the Robert Ryan Garcia fight. That didn't happen. He wound up fighting Emmanuel Tego. So, uh, yeah, that's that's what it is. Um, Mickey Bay, you know, this is a guy that's kept himself pretty busy. He's still in the gym. Maybe not as, so much as a fighter, but as a trainer. You know, we, we've seen him in camps uh, giving his uh, knowledge and expertise to the younger fighters like Devin Haney, most notably, and, and most recently, uh, Edgar Belanga. So, um, listen, man... Uh, these two guys were former champions. They got to a, certain, a, a good level in boxing. Um, they both have had, you know, strings of inactivity. Mickey hasn't fought in like three years. Uh, Tev hasn't fought in about two years. So both inactive. And look, I give these guys a lot of credit. They 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 uh, they went ahead and they uh, they took they took their career into their own hands. They put some money together, and um, their own money. I, I, I'll be led to believe that their, their own money. They're not fighting on no top rank. They're not fighting on Matchroom or or PBC or, or Golden Boy or none, of, or none of that stuff. They're gonna fight uh, with an independent promoter, um, and they're not even gonna fight in America. They're gonna they're, they're taking this fight all the way to Ghana, all the way to the continent, the motherland, Africa. So uh, it's really interesting. It's, it, it is really interesting how this all came about because these two have been uh, talking a lot back and forth on social media. Um, you know, uh, it's going to be on pay-per-view. I, I believe Mickey Bay said in the press conference that it'll be one of the cheapest pay-per-views of all time. Uh, you can get it for $29.99 or $30 whenever they fight on May 21st. And, uh, yeah, as far as the fight itself, like, look, Mickey Bay is a, is a, is a, is a very good fighter. You could even say Mickey Bay is a guy that has never fully fought up to his potential. Like, and he'll tell you himself he's had strings of, of promotional issues, inactivity, uh, taking fights on short notice. I mean, even like his last fight was against George Ferocious Cambosis Jr., a guy that's now unified lightweight champion. He was one, he was the first of three straight opponents to win by split decision against, um, you know, or lose, I should say, to lose by a split decision against uh, the Australian George Cambosis. And I would say, look, between Lee Selby, Tia Fimo, and himself, I think he was the only guy that truly deserved that split decision because um, Tia Fimo did not win enough rounds for that fight to be even a majority, in my opinion. And then uh, Lee Selby got, got clinically outboxed in that fight. I don't know how the hell they gave him a, 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 a split decision loss or a, how he got a split decision loss against George Cambosa. So he, to me, he's the only one that deserved it. He's a good fighter. Um, you know, this, this, he already made it clear, clear like this is going to be his last run in boxing. Um, and he wants to make a name for himself. You know, he's like 37, 38 years old or something like that now. So he wants to really make sure that he puts his best foot forward and leaves it all out there. And now he's fighting a guy on the other side of the ring, Tevin Farmer, who is not a natural 135 pounder, the smaller guy, feather fisted, but has good reflexes. Um, can can be defensively sound at times, but I think he I think he and his entire team overrates how athletic and defensively sound he actually is. Um, I never thought, I mean, I don't think he was like the next Pernell Whitaker or nothing like that. I think he can be uh, defensively slick against guys who are slow-footed with lower punch outputs. But against a guy like Mickey Bay, I don't think that'll be the case. I, I think Kevin Farmer in this style will have to tweak his style a little bit. And it's a very important fight for both of these guys because, um, you know, they haven't, they, they both have been out of sight and out of mind from the boxing world for a couple years now. Um, and the loser of this fight is looking at a colossal step back. So I love this fight. Um, you know, I favor I favor Mickey Bay because um, I think Mickey Bay is a uh, he's a better boxer than Tevin. He's 
Um, he's the naturally bigger man. Um, he punches harder. I just really see it as a fight where Mickey Bay checks all the boxes. The only box that might save Tevin Farmer in this fight is if uh, Mickey Bay gets hit a couple times and goes into the defense mode because he hasn't been hit in a while um, or because Mickey Bay is old. But other than that, if we're talking about if these two guys box at their absolute best, Mickey Bay is beating Tevin Farmer. No doubt about it. But um, there's, off, there's a lot of factors that are, that are, that, that are uh, at playing themselves at hand in this fight. So that's what it is. Also, apparently uh, on the undercard of this, of this uh, fight, we're going to get the return of former WBO uh, Super Bantamweight title challenger, um, Tremaine, Tremaine Williams. Yes, that's Tremaine Williams, the, the mighty midget, a guy that uh, I was once a big fan of until, you know, Angelo Leo beat him up so badly that uh, they had to pick Tremaine Williams up, up off the stool towards the latter rounds of that fight. He got his ass waxed by Angelo Leo. And then when Angelo lost to Stephen Fulton, Stephen Fulton came out and said after he beat Angelo Leo for the title that uh, Tremaine Williams would have beat him if he was in shape, right? And then we didn't hear from Tremaine Williams for, for, for weeks, for months on end. He was in witness protection, like Deontay Wilder, witness protection, no, no, nothing. Quiet as a church mouse. Then he screenshots the article and says, I see no lies, like saying, like, yeah, I wasn't in shape. But then meanwhile, anybody who was really, really following boxing in that car that week knows that before Tremaine Williams got the opportunity when Fulton fell off COVID, Tremaine was already supposed to fight Raiz Salim on the card. So it's bullshit. So since that happened, I'm not really a fan of him at all, personally, because it, it, it kind of showed like uh, a lack of character. But, you know, good to see Tremaine Williams back in the ring. Um, I think he's, I, I, I still think he has a lot of ability. Um, I wonder how good he still is or how much he has left in the tank, because like, like I said, he ran into a really good pressure fighter that night in Angelo Leo. And Angelo Leo didn't just, just knock him out. I mean, he didn't knock him out or nothing like that, but he gave him a slow, methodical beating for a sustained 12 rounds. And, um, you know, fights like that, especially when you're a guy like Williams who's had a long amateur career, fights like that are the kind of fights that will ruin you. And um, being the fact that he can't accept reality, and um, he was over here saying, I see no lies, like he wasn't in shape. When he was already scheduled to fight on that card, it, it kind of goes to show you he don't really have the character to fight at that level. So that's why he's fighting on the undercard in Africa on a pay-per-view that's $30. But that's neither here nor there. Um, either way, look, I'm, I'm excited for the card. I'm excited to see Tremaine Williams, see what he has left, see Mickey Bay, see what he has left. Tanner Farmer. You know, it is a good card. Now, they picked the wrong day. I'll be honest. They picked the wrong day because that day, you know, you got Demetrius Andre fighting Zach Parker. You got Benavidez fighting... Um, Lemieux. These are fights that people are going to tune into more than this one. But you know, here's an alternative if you don't if you don't want to watch those cards. You know, Mickey Bay versus Tevin Farmer. So that's my little thoughts on the card. You guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, thank you for watching another video on True School Sports, the home of boxing. If you made it this far, do me a favor and do yourself a damn favor. Hit that subscribe button and surely you will not be disappointed. You know, True School Sports bringing you the latest and greatest, the untouchable, you know, boxing content, interviews, news videos, breakdowns, live fight reaction extravaganza. We've got a great community of, of people here boxing fans all over the world from america to the uk to australia and on and on and on so join the empire today hit that subscribe button take care and god